So, this is your first trip out to sea. Many like you are making their way out into the ocean more often these days. Middle class families rent my boat out all the time now for fishing, scuba diving, and even whale watching. Or, like you two, to see the sunset from out on the great expanse of the sea for a romantic date. It is quite a lovely sight to be sure, but she can be cruel as well. While we're heading out to the spot, would you like to hear a scary ocean tale? I promise, young sir, that it'll drive that lass of yours further into your arms. What I am about to tell you happened about six years ago, around this very area, to me and an old friend of mine named Sam. Samantha and I had been friends since we were four years old. Both of our fathers were fishermen, and we were raised on the docks at the sea. One of my earliest memories of Sam was her teaching me how to tie a sailor's knot, and me teaching her how to bait a hook with a chicken liver. Sam's mother had left her when she was only a year old, and when we were 17, Sam's father passed away from throat cancer. Soon after that, Sam joined the Navy like her father had at that age, and she was off to war a year later. I didn't see Sam for eight years, and when she did come back, she wasn't the same. The doctors called it PTSD, but it's just what happens when you see more shit than your head can handle. One thing hadn't changed, though. She was still my friend. So what if she had nightmares or the occasional hallucination? I always felt it made her less boring than most folks. She moved back into her father's old place and was nice enough to let me move in with her when my home got foreclosed on during the housing crisis. She pretty much stayed inside except for when we went fishing, but luckily we went fishing a lot. Then, six years ago, Sam and I were out fishing when a bad storm hit. The sea claimed our boat, but we managed to get to the life raft and survive the rest of the storm. How about we take a break and have a drink? I have a great bottle of spirits for just such an occasion. Besides, what romantic date would be complete without a toast? To young love, may it weather the storms before it. And to old friends, thank you for sharing a drink with an old sea dog such as myself. What was that? Oh, what happened to Sam, you ask? Well, yes, I suppose I should finish the tale. When the storm had calmed herself, her bluster all spent, we found ourselves stranded in a lifeboat out at sea. We figured we'd be found relatively quick, so we didn't panic. That is till the end of the second day. At the sunset on the second day, we were hungry, thirsty, sunburnt, and starting to panic. It was late that night that Sam first heard the song. She told me that she heard a tune being sung out on the water. I listened for a good long while, but finally had to confess that I heard nothing. At first, she assumed that it was her mind playing tricks on her, but by the next night, she accused me of being either a liar or hard of hearing. She only heard the song at night, but I still heard nothing. The fourth day, we were both losing our strength and our minds. We had a single canteen of water when we got onto the lifeboat. We had rationed it very carefully, but it was gone now. Our thirst was great. On one hand, we would long for the coolness of the night air, but on the other, we had both began to fear the loss of our sanity. That's why they call it lunacy, I think, because the light of the luna, the moon, makes it stronger. According to Sam, the song was getting louder. She swore that we were getting closer to its source, so now she believed that I was willfully ignoring the sound of mocker. I swore to her I didn't, but she had begun to ignore me, I tried to stay awake with her. I was worried about her, but my body gave out from lack of nourishment. The sweet relief of slumber took me. I awoke with the sun to find her gone. I sat alone in the lifeboat. Never before in my life had I felt so absolutely helpless. I yelled for her again and again till I lost my voice. But there was no sign of her. She was simply gone. I loved her. I know that like I know the sun rises in the east. But I never told her. That was the longest day of my life, sitting, starving alone in a boat. The sun hissed mercilessly at my already blistering skin. My mouth was so very dry, but all that I could feel was the loss of Samantha. 
Never had I hated the sea till that day. Why would someone who hates the sea still be a captain on a boat, you might ask, if you could still talk? Well, I'll tell you. That night, consumed with sorrow, I looked into the sea. I was going to throw myself into its depths. I couldn't endure another day like the previous, but just before I threw myself into the abyss, I heard it. I heard the song playing through the wind and swirling through the waves. It was the song that Samantha had heard, and I must admit, it was beautiful. I wept with tears I didn't have water to make. I had never cried like that before nor since. I was found by the rescue team later that night. They had heard my wailing and it had brought them to me. The doctor said that I had been hallucinating from dehydration, but they hadn't heard it. I had. Now that the paralytic that I put in your drinks has kicked in, I'm going to tell you a secret. I've never told another living soul what I'm about to share with you. I still hear the song. It's her song. She sang it to me that night in the lifeboat. Her song told me that she knew I loved her, and that she loved me in return. It told me that she had to leave me and return to the sea. I asked if I could come with her, and it told me that I could join her in time. First, she needed my help. She sent me back into the world for one reason, to bring her more company. Once I have brought her enough, I can join her. I always bring her lovers to remind her of my love for her. I tie them to cement blocks like these here. Then I tie them together so that they can join my beloved Samantha in the arms of the one they love. Finally, I give them to the sea and watch them as they disappear into its depths. I know that you are frightened. To you, I must seem mad. I'm sure you think that I'm murdering you even, but I promise I'm not. Soon you'll hear the song too.